of being around the world and I, 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 I can't find my beanie. Oh, hey, welcome back for another episode of Carla Makes Beans. I've been waiting for the perfect day to make this recipe for you, which is called brothy basil beans. This recipe combines a few of my favorite things, beans, broth, a big bowl, basil, and brunch. So please come along, follow me into the great bean yonder. <laughs> so these are real live beans from my pantry. I feel weird if I don't have beans in the house. I get nervous and upset. So this recipe, in fact, with any bean that you have in the house will work. I like a big ass bean. I'm using lima beans today. These are also known as butter beans and I love them. So once you have them in the house, I believe the next thing you have to do is soak your beans. If you don't soak the beans, you can still cook the beans, but I personally am a super soaker. I believe it makes a more tender bean, a faster cooking bean, a more evenly cooked bean, a creamy bean. My very good friend, Rick Martinez, disagrees with me. Not a soaker. He doesn't believe in it. He just says the beans take as long as they cook, and if you're cooking beans, you know they take all day, so you don't have to soak them, just um, cook them. But for me, the soak of the bean is like the setting of the intention. So I don't journal, I just soak beans. And that's where I like to plant the seed and I grow the bean and I like to do that the day before. A new thing that I'm doing, however, is adding salt to the soaking liquid. So if they're gonna soak up all of that liquid, um, you might as well make it a flavorful liquid. This is more myth busting about beans. Some people believe that you can't salt the bean until it's already tender, which is not true and you can just let that go. And actually salting earlier on in the process just makes them taste better. It's like salting the pasta water for pasta. It's just getting in there from the start and it's not gonna make your bean tough. And just to show, like they're gonna absorb a ton of water in that time that they're soaking. So these sat overnight and look, look how amplified and giganticized. Another myth, or maybe it's just a personal preference or it's just my bean leaves, but I use the water that the beans were soaked in. And actually this is something that Rick and I agreed upon. If you're going to get a bunch of water and go to the trouble of soaking the bean, you shouldn't throw that water out, especially now that that water is salted and flavorful. Some people believe that you have to rinse off the bean if you want to avoid the farts. And I just think you're gonna, you're either a person who farts or you're a person who doesn't fart. It has nothing to do with this bean liquid. That's like a problem that probably is touching you at other, other times of the day and other days of the week. It just isn't the bean water's fault. Um, it's just natural and, and it's good and it's just got to come out. So just let it out. So I want to make sure that my beans have about two inches of liquid covering them. They do absorb liquid obviously as they're sitting. So they might've been super submerged in that bowl to begin with, but now it's just like just enough to cover them. Um, I'm not increasing the salt at this point because they've already been ratio salted, but I'm just adding water to cover by an inch or two before I put these on the stove. All right, so into my bean liquid, I'm gonna add half a shallot. You could use a small onion, red onion, any color onion. You could use um, the white part of a leek. You don't have to take the skins off. Um, it'll give a nice color. Huck those guys in. A few cloves of garlic, kind of as much or as little as you want. And I'm just gonna kinda bruise them. And for this recipe, there's gonna be basil two ways. I'm gonna infuse the cooking liquid with basil. So if you get a bunch home, you know, put like a nice bouquet of basil in there and this will come out later, but this basil flavor is also gonna be absorbed by the beans while they're cooking. It'll be lovely and aromatic and just beautiful and gentle. And then the basil sauce that goes in later also has basil. So then you get basil, basil, basil two times. I'm also gonna give a little drizzle of olive oil, fat and beans go together like shoes and socks. If you had some schmaltz or some duck fat or any other kind of delicious tasting oil, you could certainly add it here instead of the olive oil. 
The beans need to come to a simmer over high heat. Once they're a simmering, I'm gonna check them out. I'm gonna taste them. I'm gonna look at them. I'm gonna talk to them. And then I'm gonna keep cooking them. As far as intentions go, when I set my beans for soaking last night, I just really hoped for them to find inner tenderness. Because truly, what are we all hoping for and what are all of our intentions for life is to find that creamy little inner center that lurks inside of all of us, no matter how hard, dry, crusty, sitting around, dusty, and dank you might feel. Um, inside, there's a, a tender, creamy nugget, and we're gonna get it out. We're gonna do that together. While the beans simmer, I'm gonna keep an eye on them. It'll take an hour. It could take longer if they haven't been soaked. And in that inactive time, that's the time to make the sauce. How is this basil sauce different from like pesto alla Genovese? It is very similar, garlic, olive oil, nuts, basil. But in this case, I'm choosing to cook all of those components. And I'm doing that really to bring out like a sweeter, creamier, less hot, less sharp, less funky aspect of the ingredient. So cooking the garlic a little bit is going to mellow it. It's gonna soften it. It's gonna make it really creamy and sweet. The almonds are going to also absorb this salted water. They'll blend up really nicely. And that makes for a creamy sauce. As so you can see how plumped up and full the almonds got. And the garlic is kind of tender enough. It's just coming out of the skin. Cooking the basil ahead of time also sweetens it, deepens it, mellows it, and it will keep the sauce greener longer. I've got the, about a cup of that basil that's plucked. Yeah, the basil takes probably one minute just cooking it until it's bright green and tender and wilted and shiny and getting it right back out. I wanna just squeeze off any water that's still clinging. Everything cools down super fast because there's just not that much of it. Spread it out a little bit. I don't want to blend the almond skin because it'll be papery and weird and kind of brittle. Getting them out of the skin is kind of fun. You just pinch them. Hours of entertainment, really. So I've been obsessed with beans for many years now. They're like the song, Beans, Beans, Magical Fruit. They're truly magical uh, and very special and have been cultivated for thousands and thousands of years, like going back to 7,000 BC, 5,000 BC. The ancient Egyptians were crazy for them. The um, medieval Sicilians were freaking out about them. They have... Uh, magical properties assigned to them in Japanese folklore. And I think one of the reasons is because they're a source of life. Like beans are life. Jack and the Beanstalk and the whole thing. Yeah, stands for something. Things begin there. Then it saves the world. Beans could save the world. And so when you eat a bean, you could just be like saving that day or you could be saving the day for somebody else. If you're a vegetarian, beans are saving your day daily, probably. I don't wanna like self-proclaim myself a bean queen, but I would be totally fine if somebody else wanted to proclaim me a bean queen. <laughs> queen of all the beans, it might be actually too much of a title. I don't know if I could bear the crown. The crown is too heavy. And I have my mellowed, softened garlic cloves. I'm gonna season with the zest of a lemon for brightness. This is like a very herbaceous, fragrant, alive kind of a sauce. When the lemon zest gets warm, it'll release its essential oils. And same with the olive oil. Peggy, do you want to be in? Yeah, beans for dinner. Yeah, really. Cats don't eat beans. <laughs> Yeah. Bean lady, cat lady. Just gonna tap that in. That, whoa, short work. Short work of chopping. Sorry, this, <laughs> this isn't mine. This is my child's. It's good. Wow. That was a fast little mini chop. Quarter cup of oil. 
squeeze out any liquid that's still in there. I don't want to water out the sauce and then kind of fluff these guys up. Wow, the next smoothie that Leo makes is gonna, <laughs> is gonna taste great. <laughs> He's gonna be like, why does my smoothie taste like garlic? No reason. <laughs> Seemed great before, but. And we're back with the tool that works. That looks great. Basil pesto, take two. I haven't salted anything and there's no cheese in here. So it's definitely gonna need seasoning, even though everything was cooked in salted water. I have everything I need now for a big old bowl of beans. It's been about an hour. I have a big old pot of brothy beans and they're perfect. And they're not perfect by accident. They're perfect for a few important reasons and choices that we've made along Bean Highway. The beans are intact. They didn't fall apart. The reason that they didn't fall apart is this particular bean has a nice kind of outer layer and some beans will have a very thin skin and they'll just fall apart on you, but cooking them super gently, stirring them not very often, bare, bare little simmer, keeps them from like knocking all around in the pot and getting scuffed up and breaking and that makes the liquid starchy and that makes your beans fall apart. Mmm. They're delicious by the way. Completely creamy all the way through. There's no al dente bit. There's no little undercooked part in the center. There's no crunchiness. Um, it just kind of falls apart almost in the texture of mashed potatoes. And that is also, I think, a testament to the soaking. I'm just gonna say. You see the bean steam that's like floating in front of me? Can you guys see that? It's one of my favorite facials yet. Mmm. And I just feel that that little bit of bean journaling I did at the beginning, where I centered myself into the center of a bean and found my own inner sprout. I feel warm inside. I feel tender, tender as the night. <laughs> and I'm excited. I'm gonna serve your beans with some of the broth. So I would bring them to the table just like this and add or pass the pesto so that you get that like super fresh moment. Leo, do you want some beans? Can you just taste a bean? You've been such a good boy that all of these years. <laughs> hmm. hmm, why don't I hit him with a completely unprompted reaction? This is a true dollop. Mm. And then the true moment of beauty and joy. Like this looks great, obviously, on its own, just the way it is. But it gets better because when you kind of break the union between pesto, broth, and bean and spoon in, all of that creaminess that came from blanching the almonds and the garlic, there isn't cheese in it, but it looks like there is, and it looks like it's melting into the broth. And then the entire broth turns this gorgeous springy color. The aromas are all just wafting into my face and the flavors now are gonna mingle in like a new and exciting way. And a gorgeous way. Oh my God, drink that, just drink it, drink it, chug it. Chug it like a smoothie. <laughs> Next new hot thing is gonna be basil bean smoothies, I think, I predict it. Yeah, I can feel the magic of many millennia coursing through me. The connection through the bean to the magic, supernatural, extraterrestrial, super fantastic, famine curing, historical pharaohs. Pharaohs were involved in beans. We're going all the way back. And so you just tumble through the um, eons of time through a bean, through the tininess of a bean, back in time, millennia. That's the magic, that's the magic of the bean. <laughs>